Thank you, Caroline, and uh, welcome everybody to my study. Uh, and for those who are listening later, my name's Ian Brown, and this is the early morning devotionals of Christ Central Red Hill. And the passage that we have for today is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, uh, down to chapter 6, verse 3. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to pray for us, and then we will read this. But um, as Julian's not here today, let me just take the opportunity to say how grateful we are to Julian for his leadership and how pleased I am that he has a plan that he, he tries to keep to, whereby we go through scripture uh, systematically, uh, working through Hebrews now, and we've done it with several books, and he tries to steer us on this plan because I believe God speaks to us largely through his word. We must be open to the Holy Spirit uh, uh, giving direct revelations, but safely and steadily and securely as we walk, walk through God's word, I believe the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to us and guides us to grow in maturity, which is what today's passage is about, to grow more. Uh, and I'm thankful to the elders too, that in, uh, in the Sunday mornings, we, we walk through passages such as the one we've just done in 1 Peter. So let's just commend this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this day. I thank you for these lovely people who have got up this early to hear your word. And I pray that you will help us all as we go through it, that you will challenge each one of us in some way through your living word that the Holy Spirit may speak out to us and have something that challenges us, encourages us, uh, and speaks to us as we enter into another day. We pray this in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, now let me read the passage, and I'm reading from the ESV. It is uh, Hebrews chapter 5, beginning at verse 11. About this, we have much to say. And I have to just mention that this is where we were yesterday and where the passage ended, talking about Jesus as the great high priest of the order of Melchizedek. Quite a difficult topic. And so the writer to the Hebrews has to say, well, you're not quite ready for this. So that's why he says, after this, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of instructions about washings and the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. That's the end of the reading and may God bless that to us as we look at it. As I said in my opening words, I'm grateful to be told, as it were, what to do, what the passage is. And I might say that I chose this one by date uh, for convenience for me, because this week is a week when dear Ollie is leading our connect group tomorrow. So he's doing the preparations on Jeremiah. So I have a spare time to prepare for this one. So I chose it by date rather than by passage. But because we have a passage assigned to us, that is good, because if we didn't do that, uh, there would be two dangers. One would be that if it's a difficult scholarly passage and it's hard, we might be tempted to skip over it and never deal with it. 
or if it says something embarrassing and difficult that means changing our lives we might skip over it for that reason uh, because we can't handle it we don't want to obey it or we might be tempted if we didn't have a scheme to bring in whatever is my particular hobby horse my favorite thing that i want to bang on about but sticking to the word of god and bringing it out i'm praying that god will speak to us so as i've said uh, the writer to the hebrews is saying that these people although he's been trying to teach them about jesus being our great high priest they're not really up to it so he's saying i'm going to come back to that as he does um in chapter seven i think it is uh but for the moment he's concentrating on another message that says you've got to grow more before i can do this you've got to grow more so if you don't remember anything else of what i say i hope you'll remember grow more grow more as opposed to no more i'm not advertising a particular garden center project uh product uh perhaps i ought to add other fertilizers are available but grow more will remind you of what we are looking at this morning i talked about pet subjects that you like to uh, rattle on about uh, as you probably know i love the word of god and i like its supremacy for all matters of faith and conduct and its inspiration and so on and i might pick this passage out and say oh yes this is just for me it's telling you uh, that you need more teaching that you need more uh, sound uh, biblical teaching so that you will grow as christians uh, and not just uh, be on sort of frothy milk all the time as he says here not milk you've got to grow just like a baby does from milk products up to meat and heavy stuff on the other hand, I've got to be very careful because I might be saying exactly the opposite of what he's trying to say. What is the message? I've said it's grow more, not know more. It's very easy to study the Bible as though it's another subject like geography or French. And you pile up vocabulary, you pile up knowledge in your head but it never actually changes you. You don't grow more, you know a lot more. And so this is what he's saying. Yes, he is talking about the word of God. He uses the word teach, teaching, the word of righteousness. And uh, don't be afraid of that phrase, the oracles of God. I was a little bit disturbed by that because the word oracles suggests crystal balls and mediums and consult the oracle. Um, is part of the English language. If we wanted to go to an expert on something, let's say go to, um, we've got Al on here, haven't we, and Mike, I might say, well, I'll go and consult the oracle if I want to know something. But the oracle is used in scripture by Paul and Old Testament prophets as uh, the very word of God. It speaks as the oracles of God. So we're talking about the word of God here. But the point is, we are not doing it for head knowledge, but for application. That's why I'm pleased that our Bible study uh, connect groups are called Bible study application, not Bible study groups. It's Bible application groups. So we're looking all the time, as we are this morning, for takeaways. What do we take away from this that will change our lives? This is the very heart of worship and of reading, not that we uh know a lot or that we sing a lot but we change a lot as we are molded into maturity by hearing what god is saying through his word so he says in verse 14 uh, solid food is for the mature so that we might grow up to have powers of discernment and then he goes on to the what, what is in fact a difficult passage scholars uh, uh, not sure really what it's getting at here um, and, and so I've got to be careful that I don't fall into exactly what the passage is trying to teach us that we spend our time looking at a difficult passage in chapter 6 verses 1 2 3 and uh, discuss and argue perhaps about what he's on about he talks about laying again you've got to go on to maturity and not lay again 
the foundations of repentance. And I'm thinking, well, uh, some of the things he's mentioning here sound like good things that we should be always, even if we're growing older as Christians, we should be hanging on to some of these basic principles, shouldn't we? Uh, shouldn't we uh, always preach the gospel of repentance? Shouldn't we always preach about faith uh, towards God? Isn't this all good? Uh, and the resurrection of the dead? Aren't these fundamental doctrines that we want to treat? An eternal judgment? Yes. But let me just try and explain what I think it means. I may be wrong. You've all been here more often than I have. And so you know that we're in the book of Hebrews, that means it's a letter written to Jewish Christians. And uh, as Jewish converts, they would have known about certain Jewish rituals and religious observances. They would know a lot about the washing of hands and the ritual things they did before eating and taking part in uh, religious ceremonies. They knew about washing of hands, and therefore, it wasn't a problem to them uh, to be taught about Christian baptism. Baptism in water, being baptized, watching others being baptized was not a problem to them because they'd always done that kind of thing. Not exactly that. Christian baptism was different from ritual worship, but that was not too much of a problem. And then that phrase, faith towards God. That wasn't a problem either, because the Jews have always said uh, there is one God, uh, Lord, our God is one and so on. So to believe in God as such was not a problem so much to them. Laying on of hands, which was done by the apostles uh, when commissioning people for the Lord's work and to receive the Holy Spirit. Laying on of hands was not a particularly frightening or new thing. <laughs> because that's just something that had happened uh, even back in, in, in the Old Testament. Um, uh, Isaac and Jacob laying on of hands for blessing. That was something they, they would have known about. Um, and uh, well, all of them, one way or another, um, they knew about. Now, the resurrection of the dead uh, it is something they perhaps wouldn't have all agreed on. They might have argued on this. I think I'm right in saying from Sunday school that the Pharisees and Sadducees, the Jewish leaders, had a difference. Uh, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection and uh, the Sadducees uh, didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. And as I was taught in Sunday school, they were Sadducees because they were sad, you see because they didn't believe, <laughs> they didn't believe in the weather. So they might have had debates and discussions and disagreement about things like, is there a resurrection? Uh, do we still have to do ritual washing? So I'm, I'm not gonna say any more about that. I'm just gonna draw the, the final and general point that this was their problem. There were things they knew that were in their routine and previous experience. They were happy to go along with things that were in their experience or near to what they've been doing before. But the bit they couldn't get was it's all about Jesus. They couldn't get the fact that Jesus is the great high priest of the order of Melchizedek. Jesus, the great high priest, high priestly uh, sacrifice for sins. They knew that the priest was somebody who deals with sacrifice for sin to relate us to God. But to have one great high priest, the Lord Jesus, who does it for all time, and he's not only the high priest, he is the sacrifice himself. He sheds his own blood uh, on the cross of Calvary, the blood of Jesus, who offered himself without blemish to God with his own blood, sealing our redemption. This was new to them, to take hold of Jesus and change their lives. And so I just leave it to you that this is our challenge today. Yes, I think we have got teaching that we should dig deeper into the word of God. And yes, we must increase our knowledge because how can we become mature if we haven't got a foundation? But the message is that we must be prepared to move on, that we must be prepared always for God to change us in what we read and study. Let us get close to him. As I mentioned earlier, uh, learning 
uh, head knowledge about, for example, I'm trying to learn Portuguese since the uh, lockdown. I've done 230 consecutive days on Duolingo on my phone, a minute or two each day, learned a lot of words. And yet when I spoke to a Brazilian pastor last week, I showed off a bit and he spoke back one sentence. I couldn't understand a word. So it's no good having loads and loads of vocabulary in your head. Uh, if you if you really want to know uh, Portuguese, oh, it's Lily. If you really want to know Portuguese, you've got to go and live in Brazil and live with a family. Um, and then when you get to know a family, then you get to know them really. Uh, so I'm just using that as an example. It's not cramming up head knowledge. It's not being able to pass an exam on Ezekiel or uh, Zephaniah or something. It's not piling up head knowledge. It's are we under the Holy Spirit willing to change our lives in the light of what we hear? Because as our closing sentence said, chapter six, verse three, this will we do if God permits. So let that be your takeaway not fertilizer, grow more, grow more. This we will do if God permits. Thank you.